Hello, this is Bern, and in today's video, I want to help you to more accurately and quickly gauge a man's character and his true potential as your life partner so you can either invest your time wisely in him or stop wasting it and be set free to attract the love you crave and deserve. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. First thing I'd like to share is if you're a woman who has been hurt, who has been betrayed, who has been stringed along, whether the guy was conscious or unconscious of what he was doing, my heart goes out to you and you're in the right place if you're here to find solutions. There's a couple of ways we can do this. One is to commiserate and talk about what's wrong with the world. The other one is to not block what's wrong with the world, to understand it, but then to find solutions of how you can get the love you want, the connection you want, the intimacy you want, irrespective of the actual constraints in the world today. My assumptions for this video that you're a smart woman who is resilient, solution-oriented, and looking at ways of finding how you can create the connection you want in spite of the challenges that are presented, including men who are there to hit and run, meaning connect with you, have sex, and then disappear. Men who might just want to ghost you. Men who are old, overweight, and ugly, but still want to connect with a woman who's beautiful half their age. Those problems that exist, I'm not ignoring them, but I'm saying the fact that they exist doesn't prohibit you from experiencing the love you want, but in order for you to experience the love that you want, there's going to be three things that you're going to have to really focus on and master. The first one is the art of expressiveness, and art of expressiveness means that despite the stuff that's happening around you, there's a way for you to express your uniqueness, a way for you to express your needs, a way for you to express your radiance, a way for you to express your light, a way for you to express your sensuality, a way for you to express your hunger for life. And if you can become masterful in expressing those things, including expressing boundaries, then you're gonna rise to the top because there's many human beings, including many women who've been hurt, who have no capacity right now to express some of those things as a result of the pain they're experiencing. Second one is emotional courage. Why? Because to get what you want, to have a big dream, a dream that maybe no one in your lineage has yet experienced, true, conscious, passionate, committed love of the kind that is possible now that wasn't possible a hundred years ago even, it requires courage because you're going to have to fall and pick yourself up again because you're going to have to find solutions when all you can look at is problems because you're going to have to set boundaries when setting those boundaries might make you feel like you can lose the guy. So that's why emotional courage will be a determining factor for you. And the third one is going to be strategy. And that's part of what we're doing today. Developing some emotional courage and strategy so that you can more quickly swift through those men who are not the right fit for you so that you can stand still and give the guys who might be able to take you to the promised land that both of you want to go to a second chance or a more nuanced chance instead of from the beginning when you're not feeling those explosions of the heart saying he's not the guy for me even though he might be a guy of character he might be a guy of substance and someone who given the right context the passion and the chemistry could grow to something very meaningful. I'm never an advocate for you to connect with someone who's right on paper but you don't feel emotional connection with. I am a strong advocate with you not determining that he's not a fit for you uh, in, the term, in terms of chemistry in the first five seconds, like maybe magazines and Cinderella stories have told you to believe. I have two goals for this video. The first one is to share with you a more nuanced and empathetic approach to understand men and their needs so that you can if you want to create a long relationship with someone, determine with whom to invest your time and energy. Now, before I go into the specific needs that most women are not really conscious of when they evaluate men, and because of the lack of understanding of these needs, may make the wrong decision based on a gut level feeling of excitement for someone, I want to invite you, if you want to go beyond this video and learn even more specific ways to attract conscious men into your life who can pursue you in a healthy way so you can both make the determination as to who the best partner for life is, then I want you to hit the first link in the description of this video. 
you will see a page that looks like this. If you enter your name and email, you can start watching my free masterclass right away. The first thing I want you to be aware of in terms of these five needs is that there's healthy and unhealthy ways of meeting them. There's conscious, unconscious, sustainable, and sustainable ways of meeting them. This is not a Cosmo magazine ranking system that's gonna give you a specific score at the end of it, but it will help you to have more tools and more pattern recognition ways of understanding men to figure out who can be a great partner for you or not. Because here's the thing, the way men are meeting these needs translates directly to his capacity to offer not just himself, but you the kind of partner that you're looking for. First need that most men have that women are not super conscious of is the need for inspiration and the need for a fire that allows us to transcend the inevitable shit and challenges that life presents. Think about life the way it works right now. Think about war, think about sickness, think about financial challenges, think about pretty much all the things that make life really challenging. And if a man doesn't have a sense of inspiration, then he doesn't have enough fuel to go the distance. It's like a car running on fumes. It's gonna be moving, but at some point it's gonna stop and not be able to continue. So now, think about it. There's healthy ways that men connect to the sense of inspiration, including exercise, including setting ambitious goals, including personal development, including the depth of connection and understanding with one woman. And there's unsustainable and healthy ways, like maybe a guy is purely connecting with porn to get excitement, to get his little kick of adrenaline that he needs to go through the day. Maybe he's numbing himself with video games. Again, nothing against porn in general or video games, but if that's the way, that's your source of inspiration, it is not sustainable enough for you to go the distance. Maybe a guy is looking for short-term emotional uh, romances. You want to evaluate his sense of inspiration by his capacity to delay gratification sometimes in order to get it. Why? Because it's easier if you turn on a firecracker to have a short explosion that gives you some sense of light than to start a fire, especially if you don't have a lighter or match. If you have to move your hands and heat some rocks and blow in the, in, into the little smoke that's appearing <laughs> from that flint, it's harder to create a fire that way. But if you do it the right way, then you can create something that lasts a long time that doesn't just explode and dissipate. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a man who has the capacity to the leg gratification, a guy who has the ambition to go for more, but not connecting to a short-term solutions that leave him stranded after a short while. Second need that most of us have that few men will ever tell you to your face or even have the understanding to be able to describe, but it's something that we'll live with, is the need to feel free from our shame. Most men that you will ever connect with will have many different things about them that make them feel shameful. If nothing else, take a step back and look at the, just the understanding that you have two different parts of you living here, a conscious evolved part and an animalistic side that has uh, so many years of biology behind it that are reacting to certain stimuli and you have to superimpose this part of you that's conscious that uh, wants something long-term into this basic part. And I'm not saying women don't have that, but I'm saying for guys who have lived with a sense of shame for their sexual urges, for example, or a sense of shame for uh, their level of ambition, or for a sense of shame based on their reaction, given certain things that they don't understand how to uh, manage in terms of emotions, there's different ways of expressing that sense of shame. So you'll have guys, for example, who in order to start stop feeling less, less about themselves, will do things to hurt others, will bully, will try to control, will try to manipulate, will buy a giant car or truck that can crush other cars as if to say, I matter, I see me, uh, respect me. And what you want to do is be aware that some of the ways guys are connecting with you have nothing to do with you or your failures as a woman. Because I see women who sometimes feel there's something wrong with me. The guy that I'm connecting with is trying to treat me this way and may have nothing to do with you. It doesn't mean you shouldn't stop it or set strong boundaries or move along. But if a guy is connecting with you that way, more likely than not, it has everything to do with his sense of shame, his inability to express it in a healthy way. And what you want to do when you connect with someone who, 
who doesn't have the language to express his shame in a healthy way, can't alchemize it through exercise or through progress or through something that makes him become a better human being because the challenge that you step into in life allows you to become a better human being, he doesn't have the capacity to do that, then more likely than not, it's going to come off in a way that is disrespectful towards you, is controlling towards you, or is manipulative towards you in some way, or selfish. Third is meaning. Every human being needs, has a sense for meaning, but here's how it translates into men. You need to feel valuable. You need to feel worthy of being in this planet. And the challenge with meaning is that there's going to be on an unhealthy side a way that men connect to meaning through pleasure and comfort. Because from a very logical standpoint, if you want to feel good about yourself, if you want to feel good about life, then feeling pleasure and feeling comfort create that sense of uh, there's something more than just pain in this world. But it does, it's not sustainable. So when you evaluate a guy, evaluate his connection to responsibility. Is he someone who avoids responsibility and shies away from it? That's going to be someone who's mostly based on pleasure and comfort. A guy who reluctantly steps into responsibility or a guy who really takes it on with pride. And even though it's not something that is the most fun to do, he understands that responsibility towards somebody else, like his children maybe, responsibility towards people that he serves, responsibility to his community, responsibility towards the world around him. Is he able to take on other people's pain in a healthy way to create a solution, to create something more that didn't exist before? Because that type of man is someone who's gonna have a bigger sense of meaning. With a bigger sense of meaning, guess what happens? There's more space for him to add value to you. When a guy doesn't have enough fuel for himself, his ability to give you something meaningful significantly diminishes. The next need is the need for evolution and growth. We all want to become better. Without progress, life is really hard to live. Without that sense of movement, life is very, very difficult. So you want to evaluate, is the guy really stepping into any level of growth? And for him to step into level of growth, he has to have some goals in life. If he has no goals and no ambition, then there's little evolution and little growth. If he has a capacity to dream bigger and to be ambitious, then you need to evaluate these two things. Is he ambitious at the expense of others or is he ambitious inclusive of other people's well-being? Is he looking at how can each person benefit from this? How can I make it a win-win-win versus how can I make it a win-lose where I win and everybody else loses. And, and here's where we have uh, men right now that are, some of them are causing you to waste your time because you might connect to someone who's highly alpha ambitious, who wants to kick ass and take names, who's very confident. But if he's doing this in a way that is making others around him have less as a result of him having more, fundamentally, the same thing will be true in an interaction with you. If he lacks that empathy, if he lacks that consciousness, if he lacks that self-awareness to know that evolution and growth need to be a win-win situation, then you might get hooked with the wrong guy and learn too late that it's his way or the highway. And the last need that I'll share with you right now, which is something that, again, we don't really discuss much, and you may not be looking as, as that as an evaluation process for your man, but if you start doing that, you'll find that, the, that some guys pass the test and some guys don't, is transcendence. Transcendence is all men, whether they express it to you directly or not, have a need to know that at the end of our lives, this place that we left was better as a result of us. Think about it as a fragrance. There's a fragrance that is the unique scent of you. And when you're gone, will that fragrance still be here in some way? That flower <laughs> essence be uh, something that makes life better for people or will that be gone? So when you connect and evaluate men, think about the way they're living life, the way they're connecting with others around them, the way they're handling their personal matters, the way they are conscious of uh, even healthy eating habits and healthy exercise habits, the way they relate to children, including their own, the way they relate to vendors and clients, the way they relate to other women, the way they relate to people in service. Is that the type of life that when they are long gone from here, leave a remnant that makes those people who were touched by that person 
better off or not. Here's why this really matters. This needs matter to you because the more a man can step into these needs in a healthy way, the more he has an overflow of love, the more he has an overflow of energy, the more he has an overflow of presence to offer to you, the less he has a connection to these needs or the more unhealthy he is meeting them, the less likely it is that he can offer you something valuable. And be pretty, please be aware of guys you're connecting with right now that you feel that strong sense of sparks, but who lack the substance and therefore will never be able to go the distance with you. Hope this is helpful, useful, insightful. If it is, and you wanna take the concepts of this video further and understand how you can attract more conscious men into your life, hit the first link on the description of this video. If you like this video, please, please click like and thumbs up. Share with me in a comment what you got out of it. And last but not least, subscribe to my channel. <laughs> last but not least, if you want to go deeper and get my hand-holding accountability specific insights into your situation and you don't want to do it through videos, you want something stronger, quicker, more effective, then second link in the description will allow you to connect with me and find out if we might be a fit, a great fit to work together. Thank you so much for allowing me into your heart and to your home. So always I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.